You have 15 minutes left. Did you take your vitamins today? What's good, y'all? I received so much great feedback, hypothesis, criticisms, and just a whole bunch of comments from my last video. And a number of you wanted me to dive deeper into how K works. So first, for those of you seeing me for the first time, welcome, welcome, and behold. K is an artificially intelligent virtual smart home assistant designed to know everything about my smart home. So I created an AI masterclass series where the first three videos showed how you can create it. And the last video shows what happens when I removed all the guardrails, which prevented K from doing whatever it wanted. Very interesting stuff. Go check it out. Now, even though I showed you how to create a similar chatbot and connect it to Home Assistant and GPT, let me show you how wild things can get. To build K, I worked backwards from my end goal, which has a few parts. One, it needs to be able to answer public general knowledge questions. It also needs to be able to answer questions about my smart home. It needs to be able to trigger automations and it has to also be able to change the states of applicable smart devices. Now, as a stretch goal, I needed to dynamically learn and create automations, but that's gonna be a stretch goal. I'll probably talk about that at the end. Um, for now, I think this P0 virtual assistant is plenty for what I'm looking for. So let's tackle this one goal at a time. To give Kay the ability to answer general knowledge questions, we need a way to ask GPT and return its response. Since I have the end stage automation created, it will look a little bit daunting for you guys and distracting, so I'm gonna use a system diagram and evolve it after each goal, which will be a little bit easier to digest. And then at the end, I'll show you how the final automation looks. Okay, so let's begin. To handle the first goal, when we ask a question, the system will simply forward it to GPT and then post its response, easy. This is a simple automation that is triggered every time we send a message via Telegram calls OpenAI, and returns an answer to Telegram. To answer questions about our smart home, we need to give GPT context about our home. This includes lights, plugs, contact sensors, present sensors, and whatever else you can think that is important to note. A good way to think about this is anything that you're tracking on a dashboard, you probably want to send it to GPT. The diagram gets upgraded slightly to show that we need a system to fetch all the entities and states before making the call to OpenAI. Everything I've explained so far has been covered in videos one and two of the AI Masterclass series. Now let's up the difficulty level. We're using free text to communicate with the chatbot. Free text is extremely flexible, but the trade-off is that interpreting it is extremely complex. Without GPT, making state changes would still be possible, but it would not be worth the amount of work we would have to put in to make it work. Now, to be clear, GPT does not make direct changes to your system. It has no access to our home assistant whatsoever, at least for now. Instead of giving it direct access, we use GPT as a decision-making engine. And to make the best decision, GPT not only requires context about our home, but it also needs to have knowledge about the automations it's allowed to run. Something else I noticed about free text is that it isn't really user-friendly for anyone who don't know what the system is capable of. So to achieve a goal of allowing K to run automations and make state changes to devices, we need more consistent way of telling K what we want it to do. This is very important because if we rely solely on free text, K needs to be able to tell the difference between things like questions, commands, and commands, phrases, questions. We went over this in the AI Masterclass course. In my previous video, I did manage to solve this quandary with GPT, but the reliability of the system did take a hit since language is very contextual and nuanced. 
Okay, okay. So I said a lot of words that indicated that there's a lot of problems. So let's take a s small step back and just review a few things. We know the goal is to allow K to trigger automations and to change the state of devices. We also know that there's a problem if we rely solely on free text, um, like what we've been doing so far, we're gonna run into reliability issues. So what's the solution? Buttons. In the same way that we can trigger automations and state changes via buttons on our Home Assistant dashboard, we can do the same thing with K by giving K the ability to trigger automations via buttons. Of course, it would still be dope as hell if we could still trigger automations via free text, but for the sake of optimal usability, we're gonna introduce buttons. Now to create these buttons, we need to add a few modifications. One modification will allow us to dynamically generate buttons for automations we register. The other modification will add some specific buttons when the chatbot boots up to help users get started easier. And similar to like the previous videos that you saw where Kay was given autonomy over my house, we're gonna add an autonomy engine which will allow Kay to make changes via free text. But, but, it will also include a confirmation feature to prevent it from doing whatever it wants, whenever it wants, without my consent. All right, so this is a lot. I said a lot of things, and uh, I haven't shown you what any of this look like so far. So let's recap, but this time I'm gonna superimpose the node red automations on top of the system diagram that you see here. When I click the deploy button in node red, the chatbot is now alive. This first system here will send messages to Telegram app to provide it the initial buttons it needs to help users get started. When clicking the question button, K is primed to answer questions. The system stores the key to know which registered automation is currently running. Now in this case, the question and answer automation is active. Now what's cool about this is that K will use GPT to answer any general knowledge questions. And since we also pass it the entities and states of our smart home, it'll also be able to answer questions about our smart home as well. Now to trigger automations, the user could click the list commands button. Now this will show all of the automations that K can run. And depending on the complexity of the automations, the automation could require either no additional context. So for instance, arm the house automation where like, this would require no additional input from me, the user. But there are some automations that may require additional context, at which point K will ask a series of questions and use natural language processing to gather the information it needs to run the automation. But I want you to remember that K can also work autonomously, meaning that based off of what you tell it, K will decide what to do. I refer to this as autonomous mode. And a user can activate this autonomous mode by simply typing free text into the prompt without choosing any of the buttons. Before we re-examine the automations that you saw at the beginning of this video, I would appreciate it if you guys could like and subscribe. This not only helps me, but I'm finding out that this helps other people find this channel. Okay, so let's re-examine the automations that we saw earlier in this video, and I'm gonna provide some additional commentary so we can kind of piece all of this together. So this is free text and I'm hoping that Kay will interpret that I want to set a timer. In the previous video, some of you mentioned that it's better for us to be specific with when giving chatbots information or commands, basically get really explicit. But I don't want to remember explicitly what commands I can tell it. I mean, like, it, it's good to do that, but we already kind of have to do that already with a lot of, like, the smart home tech that we have. Like, think of Alexa, Google, so on and so forth. And we already know that we typically don't like it because we may forget a word or we may phrase it a little bit differently and then it just is useless. So I need it to be able to have a sense of variability without me having to code all of those variabilities into it. Some of you also mentioned that it would be helpful if K could learn if it interpreted something incorrectly. And I will address that later. Now, this is the confirmation system at work. 
Kay looked at all of the registered automations and correctly chose the one that I wanted. In node red, it showed that this confirmation is required, which then allows Kay to post the confirmation message here. The automation requires a time duration and Kay used NLP to see that this was already provided in the text. Left. So this is the same automation at work. Now it may feel like it's a separate automation, but it's not. It's it's one complete automation, but it has a way of kind of tying itself together. Did you take your vitamins today? <laughs> This automation has nothing to do with K, but it does highlight something important. Existing automations are able to communicate through K. So even though I can use the Google speakers to like announce questions and to just make general statements, I wish that I could respond through the same speaker. Like it has a mic, but for some reason we can't use it. So instead, Home Assistant can reach me anywhere at any time via K, which lives on Telegram. And just as a small foreshadow, this automation about vitamins uses presence detection, which has some really interesting applications when combined with K and GPT. But I have another video about that coming soon. So we'll talk about that then. Similar to the vitamin automation, my alarm automation also communicates through K, but it also uses Google speakers as a primary communication point. K will basically hold a copy of the messages sent to the speaker. That way, if I miss hearing it or it was too low or whatever else happened to the speaker, I can always look at K in the phone, in Telegram, and see what was said. <laughs> This automation was made specifically for K. In this case, if the house is not armed when I get to the car, Home Assistant will use K to ask me if I should basically lock the house. By tapping yes, K will tr then trigger my existing arm away automation. Though K presents itself like an AI chatbot, it's really a complex automation whose job is to trigger other automations. With that in mind, we come to the stretch goal where we want K to dynamically learn and create automations. And I'm going to be honest, I have not sorted that out yet, but I'm very close though. I'm very close. So I'm currently in the middle of building a subflow that will locally store my interactions with OpenAI, which when combined with chat completion enables me to teach K on the fly. Now, if these automations and the intricacies of K interest you, I'm currently working on custom nodes that you can install that can help you simplify this entire process that I just discussed. In one of the B-rolls here, um, I actually gave you a sneak peek as to how one of those look. Uh, currently, the package is in beta phase as I am working out the kinks and trying to figure out what makes the most sense. But when it's done, I'll create a new video that shows you all how to use it and, and how it all works. Now, if you're impressed by this content and you would like to support this channel further, feel free to buy me coffee. Your support is always Always appreciated and I love hearing from you guys to be honest. If you haven't already, you can check out my AI Masterclass series which shows you how you can set up your own AI chatbot. Okay, bye.